Um, so, can you, oh, that sucks. Okay, here. We were talking about research and it's re-search. And I was telling everybody, does it remind you of something familiar of something we do? And somebody said trial. They said trial and then repeat. And then somebody said, I said, what do we do between trial and repeat? I feel like I'm giving us an up for the movie really badly. And we settled on improvise, revise. And then I said, maybe it's learn. So is it starting to seem more familiar of anything that you may have learned from me ever? Like, is there something like cyclical to this, perhaps? Cycle-like? What? <laughs> Anybody, anybody online, anybody got a, the hint is research. And in management, what do you, you do anything? You do what? What do you reevaluate? In the hospitals, what do we do? Okay. What strategy? Um, I'm yelling management and health policy management. This is health policy management class, right? <laughs> We're all going to be managers. What do managers do? <laughs> okay, how do you? Y'all are killing me here. How do you prepare a trial, for example? You maybe plan. Yeah. The one word. There it is. That's your word. You plan. That's the one word. <laughs> it's literally the word. All my people, come on, help us out. Please, somebody help me. Anybody. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> really? There's one with white paper here that will work if you want to be able to see, because I know this is blocking you. Oh, okay. okay. No, there's no, there's no, no recollection here. Nobody remembers this. I'm taking back everyone's A. <laughs> I would like that back. <laughs> the Schuert cycle. No? Nobody remembers that? I'm going to tell Dr. Beck too because that's what you're doing now. <laughs> what is the Schuert cycle? What is the Schuert cycle? Hang on, let me see if there's, wow, we have a ton of people online today. Hi guys, you guys can still hear us. I know you can't see the board very well, but you've got the basics of it. So those that just came in, just kind of chat with each other um, and catch up, but we'll get through this pretty quickly, okay? All right, so let's see here. Okay. So the short cycle is very similar to what you're doing here with evidence. Is everybody Googling the short, short cycle very quickly? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, at least there's that. Um, so it's the same idea 
that were, um, yes, exactly, PDSA, right? The same thing we do with research, which is that we are planning, we're making a research question, and then we iterate. So does the PDSA cycle ever stop? Is there ever one right answer? No, no we're constantly improving. Hence, continuous quality improvement, right? So that's the same thing with what we're doing. So whenever you're asking me, um, which a lot perfectly asked the question, can we go back and revise? Absolutely. I guarantee you that the research question that you have now will 99.9% .9 not be the research question that you do for your final presentation. But what's really neat to see is how it evolves over time. Because you'll be like, what was I thinking? Or another thing that will affect your research question is there's no data for it. So it's a, it's, a, it's a combination or intersection of not just your own curiosity, the literature that's available to you, that's out there, the evidence, and the reality of what is there out there for you to actually use so that you can actually do your uh, analysis. Does that make sense? And this is so going to be on physics <laughs> one because I can't believe we forgot this. But yeah, so do you guys kind of see where the parallels are though? Okay, don't ever forget this ever, ever. ever. We're getting t-shirts made, okay? Even uh, just with my firm number. <laughs> so we'll bring in a t-shirt and we'll draw it up. Okay, any questions online? Let me just double check. Yes, Ryan, that's right. Uh, is that a question or is that a comment? That was my answer. Oh, is that your final answer? Because it's right. Okay. okay, great. What is the question? I'm sorry. Well, it's mostly known as a plan do study act. Nobody, and then, or, and some people know it as PDCA, plan do check act. Um, that's actually like a translation error, but. PDSA, I think, is the most common term. Schuert is um, S H E W A R T. I didn't know H, second H. Is it Richard no, Schuert? No, I'm, I'm blanking. Hold on. Schuert. I don't know. Is it S H U? I actually can't remember this. I think it's S C H U H A R T. Schuert. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Because when, when I type exactly what Ryan said, then it's. Uh, okay, but let's. But the focus is on the cycle itself, okay? Um, but, and then we can talk about uh, his, because his history is pretty interesting too, which we did talk about last semester. So revisit your notes. Uh, but the key is that it, it's a cycle, which means that it's continuous, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no end and beginning, it's not linear. So it kind of goes with our, um, our data, information, knowledge, wisdom cycle, right? So be thinking about that so you can understand how there's so many things that are truly cyclical. And, and that is a takeoff from where you've been if you've only been doing like um, rote memorization or rote answering. This is different because there's always something to improve. That doesn't mean you, you, you fail to act, but it does mean that there's always an opportunity to improve. All right, so let's make this smaller. And so with that in mind, let's finish off. Now, I do want to stress that normally, this, today we're just going to try to kind of wrap up some loose ends and finish up because I know that we've been thrown off a little bit with some of our technical difficulties, and I do apologize for that. But uh, not to worry, because we are managers, so we adapt, right? Um, and so we're going to tie off some loose ends, and then we're going to mostly code today. Um, so let's finish off discussing assignment two. And then let's talk about uh, moving right into SAS because we do have a lot to catch up on with that. So as we talked a little bit about mesh terms, I hope everyone went home and practiced them. But more importantly, I hope everyone got the chance to, oh, sorry, I'm reading so heavy. Um, got the chance to go through the video. Where's that? Nope, that's not it, sorry. I'm on the wrong. So, oh. I'm on the wrong screen here. Hmm. 
This video specifically, this video here is a step-by-step -step of this. So I am going to very briefly talk about strobe and the data extraction, but you must watch that video to get a step-by-step -step on. If you can't understand mesh terms, if you can't, uh, if, or if you had a hard time or need more practice, I know it is not fun to hear me for an hour go on and on about play reviewing, but it is very helpful. I think you can like, Rosie's had a helpful suggestion. You can make me go 1.5 times as fast, but go faster, um, so it's less painful. But um, but it's really step-by-step, step, so please, 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 please do that. Um, so I'm talking about this part of assignment two, which is um, the strobe checklist right here. So at this point, you have already Put your research question. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. You've put your inclusion exclusion criteria for your search. You've harvested your terms. You've implemented your search strategy. And you've grabbed two articles that drew your attention, right? And now you have to evaluate those studies using the strobe criteria. Now, this is an assumption that you have a cross-sectional study or um, it's, it's probably not a clinical trial. But if you go to the Equator Network website, which you'll see here. Um, Dr. Shafino? Yeah. Can you please um, share your screen? We can't see you at your I'm sharing here. on the board. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. No, 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 thank you so much. Oh, I think it's too big. Would it be the whole screen? How's that? Is it good? Okay, thanks guys. I'm so sorry, I keep forgetting that. Um, okay, now we good, everybody good? And you guys um, in the class, let me know when it starts to do that weird thing where it tapers off the, the screen too. I'm telling you, we have like everything. <laughs> you name it, we have it. Um, okay, so you can see here that um, you can pick. So the strobe guidelines are for the individual study. And some of you that are in my lab, for example, if you're doing a systematic or a scoping review, you'll actually use the PRISMA to pack all these together to report the counts of the studies. Okay, so if that doesn't make sense, I'll show you in the slides what I'm talking about. Because remember, we talked about the different kinds of reviews, and we talked about the systematic review is uh, it's very rigorous, whereas the scoping review is less rigorous, but you can still use the PRISMA reporting tool. Uh, but, but either way, it's a way to visually represent what your um, what studies you pulled, and then why you are throwing some of them away. This is after your mesh terms, after your um, you've decided what's what titles you'll review because you're not going to include every single study you use. But again, that's more for a systematic review. You wouldn't use that for what we're doing. So I know we kind of draft our research question kind of you know your research question uh, towards the of this class, but uh, what would you recommend our research question would be towards like studies that are observational or would they involve, it should our research question be uh, uh, such that it might involve our RTPs or randomized trials? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't plan your research question more about the type of study okay. unless your systematic review, I'm sorry, your uh, research question is specific to trials. Uh, but you want to be open to seeing what that, what your focus is. So like I said, you want to think about your population, um, your outcome, and then a main independent variable. So what, what is it that you care about the most on that outcome? What is it that you care about affecting the, that affects your population the most to get that outcome? And then the type of study will come. And that's why you do the review. So this and assignment three are going to help you elucidate what are the most dominant studies in that area that you're interested in? Does that make sense? I will tell you most of health services research is going to be explanatory or empirical studies that are um, quasi-experimental or uh, observational. And so in cross-sectional studies, because we use secondary databases and use administrative data. And so our next series is about study design. And so you'll notice that a lot of the readings are moving you into that section. So if you've started looking at the readings that you already got for this week, they're going to repeat for next week so that you have time to read them and you can see that they're all about study design. 
and then we'll do data switch. So right now we're just looking at finding the literature and then interpreting the literature. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. But a lot of this should also be reviewed from your EPI course. So hopefully some of that will just shake a little and it'll come back. Um, but for now, we're just gonna practice with the strobe guidelines, like I said. And so what you do is, so let's say you find your two studies here, right? Um, within the two studies that you find, what I want you to do is, um, you tell me what the studies are, right? What journal that they were in, and then find their PICO, right? Their research question. And that's it, that's from you. I have a hand raise, give me one second. Um, you guys don't have to raise your hand, just jump. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. It's Jacqueline. Um, so I just wanted to be sure I understood if um, the assignments that we're completing throughout the semester are connected. Like if we use a certain research question for this assignment, if we're kind of staying with that for our other assignments throughout the semester, or whether we can do something kind of one off that we think is interesting to us for this assignment, but use a different research question, you know, a different health outcome um, for other assignments later in the semester. Day one, I told you guys that's totally up to you. I recommend that you're always thinking about your end game, which is your final project for graduation. So you can change your question, you can iterate your question. So with our cycle to make it better, you can do a completely different topic. You know, some of you in the discussion had two or three questions on totally different topics. You can do whatever you want, but just keep in mind. The more you change, the more work you're doing, the more practice you're getting, but the more work you're doing. So I recommend you stick with the, you at least float in the ballpark of the, or the parking lot of the topic area that you're interested in, because all of it will at least contribute to your end game, to your final, final goal. But um, that's up to you. That's your choice. You're managing uh, Project Jacqueline. <laughs> okay, thank you. Does that make sense? Don't say anything if yes. Okay, so, <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so then, so do you understand what to do with the purple area? Mm -hmm. So then you take those same two studies and you go through your checklist. And now the checklist is, is not difficult in terms of how to fill it out, but it is a review. So you have to think about it. And I only put the two studies you looked at but in the future, you can use this checklist for all of the studies you put in your lit review for your final project. And you go through and you look, first of all, does he even have an abstract? The hope is yes, I hope. Does it tell you why they're doing the study? Like, why, why do we care? Does it tell you the objectives of the study? Well, I hope so, because otherwise how do you find the title, right? So you can almost even do these together, right? And that's what you do, you go through, and then I said, put a circle or a dot, if yes or partially yes, and X if no. That's it, and you go through. And what's that telling you is two things. One, it's telling you that you are, the. it's not the critical appraisal, you're not going through and like doing a full appraisal because that's, I give you another thing in a later module. So you're not fully thinking about the implication you're just assessing the contents of the study. But it is telling you, it, it's helping you to realize that not every study is perfect, right? And it's helping you realize that that's okay. And that's why, you know, you've heard the comment of 20 years is of evidence, of weight of evidence is causality. Because not every study is perfect. Because you can't read one study and make an assertion or make a causal statement. So it helps you realize the pros and cons of each study and appreciate that and learn and take the valuable knowledge, but at the same time recognize that, you know, studies are acceptable, but not every, st every study is flawed. And it helps you learn, oh, I gotta include this in my, oh, I gotta make sure I cover this. Because then you can just see the line here, I'm sorry, the list. You say, oh, I gotta make sure I cover that, I gotta make sure I cover that. And you're like, oh, I got this, I got this, okay, I got this. And it helps you write your own. And it makes all of us in the division love you even more than we already do. But really at the end of the day, it's 
is it really just helps you recognize, okay, these are the elements that I think are really important, or a bunch of people got together and said they're really important. Questions, comments, thoughts? And last but not least is, because remember, this is not appraisal. This is data collection. You're literally collecting data. The last piece is extraction. And I'm going to give you some examples because I find that more helpful. And that's here. Oh, it's like, oh no. So I like this example. I think it's really pretty. This is published publication quality. And this is, I mean, this is like what, a dozen papers? But you'll see, and this is actually in the analysis, so don't move on. But, <laughs> but it has the author, it has the information they cared about, right? The data points that they cared about, the variables, remember variables observation? And you'll see it in the quiz, because you'll need it for a set. Um, and then they have the data. And so what they've done is they've gone through and extracted it. So what I've done for you is I've made your table shell. So what you see in your homework is a table shell of what you should extract from your two studies. And it's just two studies, but you'll need to do it on a much bigger scale for your own lit review. So you'll see there, and I get so little. Anyway. do your best, right? We, this should all be reviewed at the end of the day. I'm not expecting it to because I want to see how you do, right? I gave you the literature. You can read it, but I want to see how you do because I don't know how many of you will read it this week. You have to read it for next week, but I want you to try it as is. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's it. That's all I have to do. Questions? Comments? Last chance for questions on homework two? Assignment two? Going once? That is a great question. So Ruth asked if the number is too low, if, if enough criteria are not met, you include it in your study. What does everybody think? No. no? Wow, we have a lot of perfectionists in here. Yeah. I mean, we should pray. Um, that's not always, that's not necessarily the case. What if we have a very new disease or something that has that nobody knows anything about? And we're trying to push the information out as much as we can. What do you do? Do you not push that information out? Exploratory research. Exploratory research? The caveat. That's the other reason is you provide the explanation. I'm really glad you said with that too. Excellent point. You say this set of studies, maybe it's three of them that have moderate meaning criteria. You say these don't meet the criteria, but they do meet it in this, this, and this. And that's worth noting, but they do not meet it fully. And so you make that assertion. Because remember, we talked about definitions, explanations are the same. Now, method is where I feel like it's very important. If they don't meet the criteria for sound method, that's where I get a little bit. That's where I might exclude. Like if they just didn't randomize where they should have, even though observationally they wouldn't. But if they completely biased um, the sample, for example, then I would say, eh. actually, you still include it though, even if it's like, Let's say they only use um, men between ages 17 and 19. I don't know why you would just brand them, but then I would say, you know, didn't meet my criteria because my criteria was everybody. Uh, but that's okay. But maybe they did a really great job explaining. So you got to remember to keep that in mind. You say, and, you know, this criteria is weird or I don't know, for whatever reason, explain it well, and then it'll be, it'll be fine. But that's again why one single study cannot be causal. Great, great question. Any questions in the chat or online? Okay. 
All right, so let's see, it's 1.30. All right, everybody fire up your sasses. Sass, that didn't, that didn't work. Your sass thing, I'll give you five minutes. Um, okay, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, it's only it's only 1.30, so you don't need a break, right? Just take two minutes, raise your hand if you need help. But um, go to the SAS Basics 3 and 4. Everybody know how to get there? Remember from the home screen? Down here, data management. So we got two weeks of SAS to cover. You go next. And you go here. Remember, do your live name. And then download this file and just save it to wherever you want to. I am gonna save it uh, and then rename it as you save it if you want. I'm saving it as turkey, I don't know, in, uh, in downloads, okay? So take about two minutes to do that and then we'll move on to the next part. It's in Canvas. Oh no, remember we talked about this OneDrive, remember? Everybody has access to their OneDrive, everybody knows how to get set, everybody, you guys are experts at live names, right? Remember, all of the, all of the, it's week three and four, all of the information is in the SAS section. Raise your hand if you need help. Make sure you can get in, do your OneDrive. Take it in your OneDrive. Let me know, okay? Oh, is your staff person? <laughs> I don't think the staff person. Oh, yeah. If not, I do have an extra laptop if you want it. should have your your live is ready to roll yeah if you have your live name ready to roll then just raise your hand or clap your hands or oh that's what it was it was taco tuesday not ham cheese my bad okay then download this excel file into your folders not into your stats obviously did you go here and do OneDrive? Yeah, and I found it. To go Windows user, to go on my browser. But then none of my stuff from last time is here. Either. You have to log in though. Did you go yeah, here, go to the OneDrive from here and see what happens? Why don't you close all that up? That's weird. I don't know what that's. How's that messing with us? Well, that's fine, but um, there we go. Now it's working. There. Yeah, it'll take set up or something. Sometimes the next time. <laughs> so, does everybody understand the steps? 
just right here, exactly follow them right here, exactly as it says on Canvas. Okay, so just get, get this going and then download this to your folder. Whatever you said here, C, blah, 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 that goes in there. Right? The C drive or the, the, P, the folder? Hey, Dr. Shifino? Uh, well, mine's C, sorry. Wherever yours is. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, so I remoted in and it's saying that the, the license isn't working. Um, so I'm going to try to connect to a different um, find another computer. Lab. Yeah, don't. Yeah. We broke public health. Public health is broken. Should I use like the biology or chemistry? At, at Cami, which one are yes. which one are you using, Cami? Um, I was just kind of waiting to see what you guys were gonna do, um, or if there was a specific one we should use. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, you have to use anything else. Okay, no worries. I'm gonna try and hope. I'm, I'm it. I'm in the bio one, and that doesn't seem to be working. So I'm gonna try chemistry. Okay, I'll try um, engineering. See if that one works. They're not working. Okay, well, we're recording, so you'll have that, but I'm really sorry. They should have been working as well. So that stinks. Um, oh, it's okay. We'll figure it out. Where are we taking notes and then rewatch it um, to try and code later? And I will do a code cafe. I, um, I'll, you guys let me know when you guys have time and we can set up, everybody can, uh, we can get online and I'll do a code cafe and we'll review this for everybody. I'm happy to do that. I love the code. Um, and that way we can, anybody, you know, that misses out because, you know, this is a thing kind of out of my control. So yes, give me one second. Okay. Online folks. 
Did you guys get into a lab? Not yet. I, Cammie and I are still trying to. Um, we're just going down each one, each subject, and seeing if a license works. Oh, physics worked. Yeah. Cool. Hey! Who was that? Dr. Shafino, do you confirm that the live name was this was successful because it says it in the log? Yes. Okay. So let me. It would help if I had my stats open. What am I doing here? Leaving you hanging. Please be updated. Please be updated. Please be updated. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I am going to show you my live name. Okay. Uh, I prefer to talk with Okay. So I put mine in the downloads folder like a lazy person. Oh, no manches. Oh, sorry. Oh, we're really doing this. Okay, come on now. This is not cool. There we go. Oh, it doesn't like that I'm using the download tool, but let's see if it lets me. <laughs> it's like, no, you cannot do this, you lazy bum. Okay, let's see. Oh, it worked, okay. That's how you confirm. Who asked me that? Was that Jacqueline? Yep, I have that. Good. Right here, oops, in the log. Right here, it says it's blue. Remember, blue is good and then successfully assigned, okay? All right, we're good to go. So, and then remember, annotation, this is how I take notes in my code, right? Okay. So, one of the other things to keep in mind is now we wanna get data into it, right? So we did our live name, we connected it to it, to our folders so that we can keep our data and come back to it as many times as we want to. Uh, now we want to use data, right? So there's two ways that we're going to talk about importing data into our code. Give me one second. Is everybody good? Doesn't have SAS. Oh, good. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Where in the log or in the live name? Then you have a you the way you wrote it is wrong. Does that make sense? Did you make sure you put the quotations and a semicolon? Make sure you look at the canvas page because the code is written there. Remember here? Where are you? Oh, okay, yeah, I see. Okay, so everybody downloaded the Excel file too, right? So there's two ways that you can make a data set. We're not gonna do this first one. I want you to do this at home to practice, okay? Because um, I just wanna make sure that we'll do this later for time, but I want us to focus all our energy on um, things that we're gonna work on today. So you can literally put the data into SAS yourself. You can manually import data, okay? So actually, you know what? Go ahead, let's do it so you can play with it. So that's the first type. Do not cut and paste, type it in. The reason I tell you to do that is muscle memory and coding specifications. So you get the right semicolon slash start. So you get that muscle memory. So you're gonna just input data, okay? That's all you're gonna do. So this is, you're making a data set right now in SAS. So it doesn't exist as an Excel file. It doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. You're making it right now. And make sure you're mindful of spaces and semicolons or lack thereof. Make sense? Online folks, how are we looking? I'm still trying to just open SAS. I've got to download it on the remote um, desktop. 
And I think Cammy's doing the same. I don't know if anyone else is using Mac. Is it going to let you download it? Cammy, is it letting you? We shall see. I'm trying right now. I don't wait, wait. To, uh, to you can't, you can't um, download SAS on the Mac. You can only remote in. So do you mean that? Wait, so I remoted in. Cool. I, I, Mac won't allow. Oh, I'm talking about. I, I'm pretty sure we could have used it, but um, no, I remoted in. To remote in, you had to like, you had like an assign you a domain name or something. Get an email in. Uh, no, you have to VPN. You have to. So you, this process to remote in is a VPN, um, and then the Microsoft desktop app, and that's it. Remote desktop. But do you guys have your VPN attached? I do, um, but yeah, I do. I think, yeah, I think what's happening is that the computers that we're using or remoting into don't have SAS downloaded, so that's why we're trying to download it to that. Computer. But I'm wondering if it's going to let you download it since you don't have admin privileges on those. That's curious. Uh, probably not. <sighs> yeah, I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, yeah. I don't have I don't have a workaround for this. Um, shoot. The only other, and this is a Hail Mary. Give me one second. Um, is Oh, you guys are looking at that, aren't you? I'm sorry. Um, let me get my laptop. Because I could give you guys remote control, but that's only one person could use my 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 laptop. Not all of you. No, the whole the whole lab is blocked. I was thinking about that too, because I can just give them the IP address and they can enter the IP address onto the remote desktop. Uh, I feel like the IP there right now. Um, <laughs> this is like my entire fall last fall, but um, but the the lab is blocked, so it wouldn't work. Um, yeah, it. I mean, I'm sorry. What, the date of the first data set that's in the manual input that's just a random data set it's just your own original data set right that that was like a code to start the software no that's a data set that's a whole data set so what is this out equals data set name do we put data set, do we put our own data set name there or what are we are you getting ahead of yourself oh we have to do that second part yet? yeah we're not there yet no just do the first block everybody done with that first block you can run it when you if you're feeling lucky tell me what happens Very good. So it was uh, successful? Yeah. Very good. All right, so let me see. Yeah, I mean, because I think it still says the same thing. It still says I have a I think you didn't. Okay. Um, so this is one last option. Um, <laughs> I'm going to forward you guys an email online, folks, and hope for the best, but I make no guarantees. So I'm really sorry. Um, let's see here. Okay, did we run that? Awesome. Okay, give me a second. Okay, I'm gonna forward this to the, um, let's see here. I'm trying to remember who all is online. Oh, um, 
Ryan, can you forward this to everybody that's online? Yeah, sure. Thank you, sorry. I don't wanna, it's, it's getting a little tangled in here. So I wanna make sure that we're, we're still moving forward because I, I, um, I don't want us to lose more time than we have, but I do wanna make sure that we're still recording. And so online folks, we do have the recording and we will have a code cafe so we don't lose too much momentum. Okay, so was everybody successful in getting this? And did you look at your data? Do you know how to look at your data? Okay, so one of the best ways to understand how data works together, and look, I am copying and pasting because I'm old and I can't. So I'm, now I want you to see a couple of things. So if you notice this yellow bit, that tell you, tells you that you're inputting data manually. So that yellow color. So the thing I really like about SAS is that it does give you a little bit of feedback, right? And it says, okay, you're doing good, good job, good job. Oh, you blew it, right? So it does give you a little bit of feedback, it's helpful. Um, and one of the important things is, so we've done a live name. That's a very unique code. Data is another unique code because data is how you create, change, destroy, overwrite, whatever. Proc, P-R-O-C, AKA process, is how you just look. They're like, uh, how do you say? lenses, but you don't actually change it. Does that make sense? So proc is the best one because you're not really doing anything, but you're doing things, but it's, it's reversible. Data is not reversible. So that's why you always make a copy unless you're confident. Does that make sense? Or that's why you always keep the original and you don't touch it. Is it kind of like when you like if you like recode a variable in SPSS and you work with a recode variable instead of the original variable? Um, unless you want the original, it's up to you. I mean, if you're recoding it, you've changed the variable, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want the original, but you compare it to the original when you want to um, check it to make sure you did it right. If you look at the value and you look if you like aggregated two of the categories, mm -hmm. then yeah, you would look at the original. Okay, so when I run it, I highlight. Running man, am I still sharing this? Let me share this so you guys can see it. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so I run this guy and I made a data set. But look, I don't see anything. I don't get any credit for my work. Do I? As a matter of fact, I do. Now, what's the name of my data set first? Does anybody know? Example. And what did I say the live name is? That's the nickname for my folder, right? Remember, that's just the nickname. So if I don't want anybody to know where my folder is, I'd say Taco Tuesday. That's where my folder is. You don't know where it is because it's a secret. Okay. So whenever you don't indicate a live name, and I'll show you this in just a second, whenever there's nothing that tells me that it's linked, because right now they don't know each other. This is called a temporary file. It's a work, it's called the work library. So I wanna go look at my data set. So I'm gonna to go to the libraries. Do you guys see here? You can, right? Okay. See work? There it is. There's my data set. Isn't it pretty? And look, what do we have here? January, April, dip. So now you know what? What did you input? What is this? That's a, one variable. Thank you. And that's another variable. So what is this? That's a new variable. So not only did you make two variables that you input by hand, but you actually created a new variable from the two variables you input. Because like January is this, April is this, Right? And then, congratulations, you did SAS math. Because you told it, take 139 minus 104, right? Ta-da! Oh, anybody remember? Libraries. And then works, because it doesn't have, it's not safe. Now, let's go back and do this. Let's say I love this data set so much 
I love this data set so much. I want to keep it in my folder forever. What's my live name? Taco Tuesday. Taco Twos. So I'm going to go Taco Twos, period. So whenever you want to save something permanently, you put your alias or your folder or your live name, the official term, or live name. I don't know. I call it live name for like 10 plus years. You call it a name. So this is saying, hey, says, I don't want to just move my folder because when I close this file, it's gone. And I really like this data set. It's special. So it's a period in here. So and it has to be all no spaces. Run it. Do you, have to, do you have to run again? Sorry. Yes. Run it again. I was like, is that my? I was thinking that. <laughs> run it again. That's right. Nope. Great question. Not case sensitive. Oh, but your file names cannot begin with a number or a symbol. Great, great point. Okay. Okay, so go and now, now you can go back over here and go up. Okay, it's still in there because you made it before, but now look where it is. It's in Taco Tuesday. Yay! Yes? Who said that? Go back where? Messing up your stuff. I think it's restore. Try restore. It might be enhanced editor. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, do explore. Go to your explorer. If you go to view and explore, do you guys see this? It's that. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Any questions about this? Questions, comments? So do you guys understand how I don't want you to worry about this part, but I do want you to think about how variables work, right? So that the, you're calling the variables. That's why the name is very important. Okay. And notice though, that they do appear exactly as you type them in lowercase, all that. Okay, so when you create them, they do do exactly what you tell them to do. Okay, now go back to your canvas. Now we're going to import our um, our existing data. Okay. So now you're going to do import your existing data. So type this in, except for this part, which is the location. So, but the most important thing is start with this first line. And what your first line is right here, you type it in, I'll copy and paste because I'm 
I'm old and lazy and teaching, so you guys have to type it in. The key is remember that you put it where your li library is, right? In your folder, hopefully. You did not blot, by the way. Your file is not in your folder. Which is fine. Just make sure that you put the right address. Dr. Shafino, when I um when I inputted the deed, I got this um message that I put in the chat. It says one or more variables were converted because the data type is not supported by the V9 engine. Does that mean anything significant? Um, yeah, it'll be a character numeric issue, which we'll talk about in a minute. You have to recode. Don't worry about it for now. For now, it, it'll be an issue in a minute, but not right now. <laughs> but you're good. So you import it successfully, I take it? Good job. Okay. I think so. <laughs> well, go look at your data set and see. Um, okay, so then we do this one. I forgot what I named mine. The key is that you put in your live name, but then you have to, oops. What did I just do? Look at that. What a mess. Sorry? No, remember I said that's just a SAS um, aesthetic rule. There's no rule for that. I do that just because that's just the way SAS does it. So commands are, I do them uppercase. You guys can tell the difference. Unique wording is um, or variable names, lowercase. But not, not by, it's, there's no um, rule. So this is going to keep not letting me. Oh, this is being read only. So watch out that your um, your file is not read only. By the way, mine was read only. Just FYI. Um, there we go. See how this is. It originally only let me do read only, but now it's letting me copy it. Okay, so. Remember that you put the data file exact, and then you must, 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 must put the file name. My file name is, and the key is to put something you'll remember. So that's why I always do something I'll remember. Okay. And type it all in, I'll type it in. I don't know. That looks like a type. There we go. Okay, close enough. I, I'll just uh, freeze it and then, then type it in. Okay, so make sure. Does everybody know? Was, was everybody able to locate their file? Did you see where your cell file is? You know what? I distracted. So when I there you go. Guys, make sure you look at the properties on your Excel file. Um, mine had read only on it, so I don't know if it'll impact you. And Jack, that might have been something for you too. I don't know. Um, does everybody know what I'm talking about? You right click on the Excel file and look at properties. Yes. Is there a way to get the address for the file without having to type the name? Like I saw you type turkey. Um, or you click not that I know of. If you click shift, right click, and then there's Oh, there you go. There you go. So I just just make sure that you're copying the whole path because for some reason mine was only doing downloads at first, just with word downloads. Monica, you'll have to show me that because that's cool. But the key is um, that you do make sure. Do you see the difference here though? With the the live name is pointing to a folder. This is pointing to an actual file. That is critical. Make sense? Because we're importing a data set. You look confused. You good? Okay. Oh, sorry. I, I can't tell the difference with the mess. Okay. So that means that there's something else to do. Yeah. 
But you can't put the new name there. You have to put the actual name. Wow. Yeah, of what you copied. Uh -huh. That's the actual name. You'll rename it later. And you have to have this box. I told you, it's not a complicated 
You guys are doing great. My outlook turned blue. Your output turned blue. Won't turn blue. Won't turn blue. That's like such a general question. I wish you guys could like, you know, throw your screens at me so I could see them. Wouldn't that be cool? No, we're not there yet. Let's see. Everybody did this. What are you missing? Semicolon. Oh, and then I maybe no. And you put data. You put data. Delete it. There you go. Yeah. Put data set and then all right, ready again, help each other. The more you do it, the more practice you get, and helping each other is the best way to do it. Let me go check my online folks. Online folks, please definitely jump in in case I miss you. I don't want to, I don't want to neglect you. Oh, I'm so glad, Ryan. Awesome. Yeah, it, is SAS Studio like it looks it looks different than your SAS. It looks different, but it's the same. But the only other problem is that it, it doesn't have any memory. So it's kind of a ah, I see. It doesn't save to my account that I made. It doesn't save a lot. It doesn't have a lot of load for memory. Mm. You'll have to do okay. it all the time. But that's okay. At least you'll get to code with us. All right, so did everybody get imported? Yeah, what's up? Can you make your window so I can see the whole window? Don't want to cut it off. That's, that's going to make it harder. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that search that XLSX card XLSX? It's supposed to be like a flag. That's not how you type. Okay. That's okay. That's deserved like that. But now remember, you're you're not saving it from them either. You put data set in. Yeah. You gotta save it to your library and then give it a name. Yeah. So now you have two. Now you have the temporary file. So this is your work folder. How do you save it? I told you. How do you, how do we save a file permanently? How do we save a file to our library? Okay, you hear that? Can we what? <laughs> no, it'll be easier. Yes, you are. It's a hard learning curve. That's what I know. Actually, you're funny. You don't see why. You put your live name. Um, go down. You can choose it. Whatever you want to say. That's okay. Live name period. Uh, yeah. What do you want to rename your new data set? Okay. Then you put your live name. No, not the word live name. No, word live name. And then you put your live Thank <laughs> you. 
So let me know what can I do to help. How are we looking? Thank you. Hey, Dr. Shia, if you know, it's it's just yeah, it's it's just tricky um, trying to. Oh, yo, go ahead. Are are you? Is someone else talking to you? Oh, hang on, you guys. I can't hear Ryan. Can you say that again? Um, I don't I don't know if anyone else online is feeling this. Um, who has a Mac? But it, it's just really hard to follow along, like without actually being in the program. So. I'm just trying to figure out a way um, to you like the SAS studio looks so different that it's like I'm I'm just like confused. I don't know if uh, like Cami or uh, Sarah if you're if you found a workaround or if you're just taking notes today. Who's um, on SAS studio right now? Is it just you or is Cami on there too? Uh, I'm just taking notes today. It just is seems like too hard to try and figure out. <laughs> the name is a little unique uh, for SAS studio, and then but. Uh, Try doing the manual data set because that'll at least give you a little bit of practice in terms of data steps. But, um, and then importing files is a little bit different too. Um, because otherwise, the because um, the, the nice thing about SAS Studio is that it's more point and click. So it's a bit more like SPSS in that respect. Um, is that you can actually like create a live name by drop down menus and you can create and you import data by just drag and drop. But well, it, uh, Dr. Is, Chief, you know, is, is there someone I can contact in um, in IT that will help us set up a computer lab for second. public health? I'm gonna walk over to the speaker so I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. Hi, Dr. Chief, you know, sorry. Um, is there someone I can contact in IT who can help us set up a computer lab for public health? That has like SAS working, or and I'm sure, like I'm you've probably done that before, right? But like, like do, like last semester we had a computer lab for public health. Oh yes, and like um yes, that's what I've been doing for the last month, and it's okay. And I no, see, I and it's just you, like I am working diligently. Yeah. I am surprised. Oh, I, yeah, I bet. Hearing and the others aren't working, so I will be um, pursuing more remedies. So that you guys for sure. Thank you, Dr. Shif. You know, yeah, I know it's it's know. tricky with like all the tech I'm stuff. So, so I, I'm totally empath. Oh no, it's fine. I'm I'm trying to figure out like a workaround too. We have a we have a site wide license, and you know, SAS is such a great tool, and it's used by so many of us that I don't know why it's. Um, it's yeah. Well, I I appreciate your like flexibility, and 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 I know you're trying super super hard. So I'm. I'm trying to follow on the best I can, like take notes and stuff. I just don't want you guys to hate SAS because I'm like, ah! <laughs> but yeah, get it working, I promise. I no, I don't, I don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I, I, I understand. I'm, I'm flexible with, you know, Where's I, I appreciate it. They promised me that this week, but at this point, I'm just, I'm going to try to get computers for you guys to get because I, I, we have to be able to work. So definitely, definitely. Oh, you guys are so sweet. We'll take a little break, right. run to the ladies' room, and then we'll be back and uh, we'll get to play around a little. Okay. Oh, but the next good. Brian has the data dictionary for you, but you're going to want the more recent one. Oh, Tiffany has been using SAS Studio. You can get in here. Um, she's been hey, using Tiffany. Studio, so she can troubleshoot you if it helps. So you can chat with her. The beginning is different, like the lib name and the rest of it, and importing data files, but then the rest is like pretty much the same. And like there are some parts of it that's lots of a learning curve. Um, like if you don't remember like the steps to importing, it's like talk. 
you know. Hey, hey Tiffany, can you Tiffany. can you hear me? It'll like try to auto bracket, like, like auto guess it for you. Yeah. Hey Tiffany, can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, say that again. Can you hear me? Can I help you? No. Can you hear me? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. The the um, first, like in the middle of the class. If like. <laughs> Can you can you save data on the SAS like university on the SAS studio? Yeah. So you can basically do everything you can or like like everything we're doing right now, you can do in SAS Studio, like the same stuff. I've been using is there SAS, any I've been using SAS Studio, oh, so, um research with shipping though. Yeah. Oh awesome. Could you potentially like I cannot remember. I don't know, like, like, do you have your laptop with you? Like, could you like, just like share your screen and just like, uh, potentially help with like, maybe we can do this another time, just like walk through like, how it's different. Yeah, how would you want, or like your people you said? Or even like right now, like, like maybe you could ask Shiafino to log into SAS Studio and like, I don't know, I, I'm just thinking like, because it sounds I don't know if we'll be able to like get this up and running this like remote computer access. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Or we can just wait till it till that back. works. So, yeah. Like, or you have, like, just like take over. I don't well may, maybe ask her when she comes back, like, yeah, if we could yeah. use like SAS Studio just because we all have access to it. Yeah, it's kind of nice because you you can like access it anywhere. Um, like even if you didn't have your Mac, like you wanted to use one of, like you came in. Like when I come into the lab, I just like log into their computers and I could pull up all my stuff still because it's a cloud. Oh, so that so yeah, I guess like my question is like why aren't we using that then? Sorry, it's kind of loud in here. Was that a I, I why aren't we using that then? I wonder. Like, is there a re They're wondering why we're not using, like, because yeah. you yeah. have a very small data set. Oh, oh yeah. That's why it's feasible. Yeah. It, it does have, like, limited capacity. Oh, OK. OK, I understand. And when we, we're, if you go cool. into the hospitals, you're looking at tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of records. So it, it makes it um, a lot harder to use. Sure, sure, sure. That's studio. Um, but it's not ten of okay Trust yeah me. yeah i understand yeah sounds good but in a pinch that's why i said this is a hail mary and so in a pinch it works but not for like in the field it's okay like okay definitely it lacks the security for like hipaa so for medical records and things like that um so it would be easier for me but it doesn't really serve you for practicality and uh, implementation. All right, guys. Who? Oh, okay. I'm like, I'm Rob. Thank you. 
Okay. Well, just ignore the Google Doc. Um, eventually, I'll get you to that. It's just more uh, support information. Don't worry about that. So, the very first thing, once you have a data set, which you now have a data set, is to know what kind of data you have, what, what's in your data set. So, what we do is the very first process, which is called content. That's going to tell you about your data set. So much like what the log does, it told you a little bit about your data set, prop contents will tell you what's in your data set, okay? So all you do is you would take these two lines and run those. Every time you see data set name, by the way, that's your live name and the name of your data set. That's, that's informative, that's not, you understand? When, I, when you see data set name, Name. That's your live name and whatever you need your data set. Live name, period, data set name. Not data set name. Okay, so please do not put data set name. So just the live name. No, live name, your live name, period, your data set name. So if you look at mine, you'll see. Uh, that's my live name and that's my data set name, right? Do you see this? What is it saying? Oh. Well, that's your thing. I mean, I'm <laughs> y'all do your thing in your computer. <laughs> I'm not asking questions. You can put like sugar pie, honey bun. I don't care what you put in your live name. Please do not drop the half bomb in your code. <laughs> Because I would be embarrassed. But anything else is pretty much game. Oh, no, we all gotta go. You better just go for it. <laughs> what should we expect? Go for it. What'd you get? That's right, because that's not your log, is it? 
output. That's right. So that is your first. And so PRAC gives you results. So PRAC will give you actual results. This is the first time you're actually using that results window, right? Yeah, the program editor is you can throw, you can close this like view table. You can close that out. Your output. Oops, oh, I haven't run it. So I run this. Oh, thank you. Okay. And you run that. Oh, did I even run this one? I don't even think I ran this one. Okay. It would help if I actually imported my data, which I did not. Now, see, and I can see Turkey. So now I ran proc content, and this is what I have. Okay. So does everybody, you should have this when you run your prop content. This is always, so let's say you're a consultant, let's say you've got a Excel, random Excel file that says find out about this at work. This is 20,000 patients. So you can't read the Excel file, right? That's a lot of patients to scroll through. So this is gonna tell you, what is this? How many patients are in here? How many patients do I have? Remember what, what's a patient? Who said it? Say it louder. You're right, whoever said it. Turn it over here to you. You can say it. it's okay, don't be shy. <laughs> Aw, it's okay, please, please. What's our patient? An observation, right? Our unit of analysis, okay? Our unit of analysis actually in this day set is hospitals. So our patients are actually possible, okay? And then we have information, certain pieces of information about each hospital. We call those variables, right? So we, how many pieces of information about each observation do we have? 172. So imagine a matrix, right? 172 times 6,239. That's a lot of data, right? Okay. Questions online? All right, so the main thing you want to glean from this are two big things for now. One, the variable name. This is what you're going to do to call these variables because you want to see what they have in it, right? What's the value? And then what kind of variable they are? They're numeric or they're character? This is not the same thing as what kind of number which we'll review in a minute because everybody needs to review this from our the assignment one. So I'm going to be feeding you back assignment one information slowly. You recall from assignment one? Okay. So numeric is anything with a number, only numbers, no symbols, no letters, no word. You know what I mean? Those are the kinds of variables we want to use for our modeling, our analysis, our statistics, right? For the most part for our inferential models. We can still count them for frequency tables and even cross tabs, but they're, they get a lot harder when you're trying to do inference statistics. Character is pretty much anything else. Also known as string, for those of you that did computer science. Questions about character and numeric. Sometimes, and this is a, an issue Jacqueline just had, Sometimes a, num a, a variable that should be a number comes in as a character. That's when things go a little hairy. What do we do? We have to recode it and tell it, hey, you're a number. If you forgot, I'm here to remind you, you're a number. And we'll deal with that. It's a little bit more advanced, but we're going to wait on that because we don't need it right now. But that's what that, that error message will come into. Okay? So this is all your variables. Well. Who knows what these mean? Anybody? Nobody? That's good because you probably shouldn't know because I have told. <laughs> Do they always come out as alphabetical and so they're numbered? Great question. Did you did you do that on purpose? Yeah, that, we talked about it. Right? 
<laughs> he did not see making fun of me. But actually, you have options. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so after your data set name, and you go ahead and do it. After you write data set and put space and you put options. No, you, sorry. You put order equals, I think it's bar none. So the default is alphabetical. But let's say you want to see it in the order it appears in the Excel spreadsheet, right? Column one, column two, column three, blah, 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 blah. You do order equals bar none. Because I thought it was bar, but it's bar none. I couldn't remember. Run order equals bar none. No, inside the semicolon. Nothing happens outside the semicolon. Great question. Nothing happens. So right now you see here it's alphabetical. Now we're going to do order equals Barnum. Okay. And what do you see? It's no longer in alphabetical order, right? Now it's in the order of the position that it appears on the Excel button. Make sense? Did you get to work? What a weird. Sometimes if your computer, if your SAS is acting just completely insane, like it's possessed, <laughs> just turn it all off and turn it back on. That is sadly the weirdest thing, but it works. I, I don't know why. Did everybody get that? Was everybody able to run the crop content? Mm -hmm. No? Who's a no? Raise your hand. What happened? Yeah. What? Why is it misbehaving? Can you show me the screen? Data equals, is that your, um, hey, okay, this run, why, you're missing a bunch of stuff here. You're missing like a ton of code on the import. Oh, is this, this is it? Oh, okay, this is wrong. This is totally wrong. Yeah, it's like you're missing a bunch of code. Yeah. This is that. That's, that's correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 This, yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. this is really, you got to delete this because you put it right in the, it's getting really. Yeah. 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 No, not that run. See this? You cannot. Guys, remember the dark blue, the proc and the run? That is like your little house. Do not delete the space between the house. <laughs> yeah, because that will mess you up. So you run this one, unless that's the wrong place. Is that where you want to be? No, this is. Okay, run that guy. Did it run correctly? Look at your log. I just used. No, no, no. You're good. It's being used, which means you got to close this one. Close these three. Okay. And then do you have the Excel file open? Okay, run it again. No, no, no. On the contrary. Run it again. Let's decide. Decide. See here? Should be safe by now. Should say something that's going to start to open. I think this one has been, because this one is not. Okay, then I would save your editor window and then close it all and start over again. Um, like open it up. Like, save the editor so you don't lose your code. Like, I have that tool, and I just oh, copied everything, okay. closed everything, and opened it differently. And it worked. Yeah, that's why. Don't lose your your scratch pad, the editor window. You don't lose that, but you want to start it over again. Because sometimes that will just get wonky like that. Okay. All right. So now we know what we have in there. We know it's in there. Where'd I go? Import. Oh, and look, I had already had you guys working with the live name, so you're good. Okay. So you, this is just the live name. See this? I highlighted it in case you don't know how to save it permanently. Okay. 
See, I put live name, data set name. Don't put the actual word live name, data set name. Put your live name, your data set name. Okay? All right. Now, you're going to want to download this into your folder. This is the data dictionary. A data dictionary is what you have to have so that you know what all those variable names mean, right? So we're going to jump to page 95. So you guys can see that this is an actual survey of hospitals. And it's hospital services, very much like Donabedian structure process of all the hospitals in the United States, acute care. Oh, did I get the wrong page for the start of the hospital? That's weird. So if you look, here is the hospital, the 2014 annual survey, okay? So every hospital gets this survey and they're asked all these questions. So they're asked to control, right? Control is ownership. And you see how it's very fine scale. So this is government, non-federal, not-for-profits, just be kind, for-profit, and then federal, right? Um, I thought it was 95, but, but it's actually, oh, it's 91, my bad. Okay, so this is just to show you, you're going to see this again. So when you look at the data dictionary, I want you to envision this and these numbers, because you're going to see them in just a minute. Okay, so this is the ownership, right? Does that tell me what kind of hospital it is? No. This does, the service, right? The service. So, and this is acute care. So when you hear acute care, that's general medical service. Acute care short stay. Make sense? Yeah? Everybody hear that? Okay. So this is a hospital unit institution within the facility, surgical, psychiatrics, blah, 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 cancer hospitals. These are specialty hospitals, right? We're going to just look at acute care. So acute care is what? What's the, what's the value? Remember, variable, observation, value. So what's the variable for hospital type? Not ownership, but hospital type, like their focus with its service, right? And the value for acute care, AKA general medical and surgical is 10, right? See how they've annotated it? This is a really well-made survey. Ask Tiffany about one that's not so well-made or annotated. Okay. So now I'm going to take you to the data dictionary, which starts on page oops, uh, 35. Well, OK, for some reason, the page numbers work for me. There it is, 37, apparently. So I'm just lying, making up numbers. But you can see this is a good data dictionary because this is actually a massive data set. You only have this data, this table, the demographic table. So this tells you the field name. This tells you the survey question it corresponds to. So if you look at the survey, you'll see that it's B3 or whatever, whatever the service was. And you'll see, for example, C control, control, type of authority responsible, sir, service. Service code, category, the best describing blah, blah, blah. So that's B2 and B1, right? Section B2 and B1. And look, it gave you Appendix A and B, which are right after the data dictionary. She just keeps scrolling out. Questions? Okay, so everybody understands the data dictionary? 
Okay. Please review this. Okay. We already did that. We already did that. Why did that repeat there? That's weird. Oh, well. Okay. So go back to your SAS code. And we're going to do our first frequency table. So we're going to do how many hospitals in our data set are acute care. Okay. So if we want to know the frequency, which is just counting, it's called proc freak. So you do look at my, you have to look up here though. Well, you don't have to look up here, but you have to copy my code. I think that was the name of the variable. Is that right? Right there, control. Okay. All right. How many hospitals are acute care in this state? Oh, wait, let me see. I'm not running it. Somebody else tell me. How many hospitals? And remember, acute care is 10, right? Sorry? I didn't put 10 anywhere. Why, why did I put 10 anywhere? That's all you need to find to tell me how many hospitals of 6,000, blah, 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 how many are in acute care? Anybody? Can anybody tell me? I did the wrong variable. Way to catch your crazy old teacher. Look, control is ownership. Service is the, the type of service, SCRV. Really? Y'all ain't even helping me out, huh? Y'all just go okay. up here. 4,693. Very good, 4,693. I think, I don't know, I didn't run it. You agree with her? Okay, you got one person I can Couple people, okay. Did everybody get that? Everybody agree? Okay, did you do serve, not control, like I tried to lie you guys for? Did, now check your code. Check your semicolons. <laughs> You know, a lot happening here, teacher. Right here, you gotta scroll down. You gotta get over, click on it. Go all the way up. Where are you going? Ma'am. Okay. 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 You good? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Come over here, like, I'm <laughs> Anybody else? You gotta scroll all the way down. Now, here's a little friendly hint. If you need to clear your stuff, y'all need to keep your stuff clean because you get it gets a little messy in there. So look, you run this. See, it's right there. But look how long this is. This thing takes forever. So what you do is the results here. If I go to my results up here, everybody have a look. You can right click and delete and clear it out. So that way it's empty so that when I run it, that's the only thing in there. So it doesn't get too crazy because then you, you'll be scrolling for days because the new output comes at the bottom. Right click at the results. Uh -huh. Or you can just delete the one result you don't want to see. Like you right click on the one thing. Okay. 
So does everybody understand that? Okay, now for our last, for our last activity, look at the data dictionary and tell me how many hospitals are in California? I don't care what kind of hospital, I don't care what kind of service, unless you can figure out how to do a buy statement, but just tell me how many hospitals are in California? You have all the tools you need. So get with a buddy and tell me how many hospitals in California? They don't have to be acute care. They can be any. I just want to know the total number of hospitals in California. Get together with your group. Uh, 31, I guess. I lied last time, so I wouldn't trust me. Let me see. 35. See, it does say 35. But there it says 75. What the heck? I don't know, guys. It says 75. Online folks, do you have questions or need help? Let me know. Um, All right, anybody? <laughs> Raise your hand if you're ready to show me. Dr. Shafino? Yes. Uh, where is the data dictionary located? Oh, it's in the canvas page. Okay, I'll find it. Uh, it's, it's right here on the, it's after the first page of code. Okay. So if you look, um, SAS basics continued. Okay, I think I just have to go back. Maybe you see if you go back, it's you, if from the from the cover page at the very bottom is that the SAS data management link to the module. Mm -hmm. I think it's the third or fourth page is SAS basics continued. Oh, okay, I just had to keep going. All right, All right, great, thanks. Yeah. All right, we got one that knows how many hospitals in California. Anybody else? Anybody else want to guess? Okay. All right. Let me see your code. 
Very good. So that's more what quick keep this up because let me see your code. Mm -hmm. Is awesome and perfect. I have them in here. You let me back in. Thanks, Dr. S. Brian, are you okay? You, are you in, right? Yeah. 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 And I, you know, I actually, I think I figured out a workaround. Did you really? Well, yeah. I think all I'm going to do is I'm, I'm doing um, like boot camp so I can like switch over to to a uh, Windows 10 on my Mac and just download it to Windows 10. I have no idea what Bootcamp is. It's like where you can use um, Windows on a Mac, basically. <gasps> no way. Yeah, so I think that's what I'm, I'm like setting it up right now. And it seems like I'll let you know how it goes. It, it looks yeah, like yeah. it's it's working though, so that far. Magical. Okay, for sure. I'll, yeah, it'd be great. Okay. Um, Let's see here. Uh, so we have two people that got there um, that were able to get there. So uh, Shivani, come set the code in. So you have to use my live page. All right. Use my use that first line of mine. And then no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Maya. Good. That's right. Sorry. You have your code after her. Okay. But don't run it. Oh. But you have to use my my uh my my set. You can write it down. Just remember your variable. Yeah. But I thought it was. I thought it was we had to put the California. That's what I thought too. Very good. Thank yeah. You. yeah, thank you. You're the okay. one to like. So that's one. Yeah. <laughs> and this is my live name and my data set. Okay. We'll kind of stop it down. I saw eight. Oh, work smarter, not harder. I like that. <laughs> Do you want me to run it? Run both lines for me. In both both frocks, I mean. <laughs> so thank you very much. My um uh, so if you notice there's more than one road that will lead to Rome, if you will. And so both of them were able to get us. So Shivani got this one that gave us the nickname for California. And there's two things I want you to notice. One is this one is the abbreviation. So this is a character variable, right? And this one came out to what? 415. And what is the code for, uh, for this? 93. And this one came out to 416. So what does that tell us? We blow up this data set? No. It tells us that we need to triangulate. So it is good to have multiple streams of information, but it's good to triangulate so that we can contextualize and say, okay, what is the difference? What is the similarity? Where is the variation? Right? Again, leading to that belief of, hey, there is not just one right answer. And that's the beauty of it. So we'll close with that today. I know this is a lot of information. Please practice at least a little bit of just your live name and importing the data set. And get comfortable and proc freak as many variables as you want. But practice, practice, practice. This is not a class you're going to succeed in if you do not practice. We want to make sure as long as we have our live name, it's safe. It is safe, yes. And save your save your editor window. Mine's not saved, but but save your editor window. But um, but yes. And this data 
dictionary is a nightmare, right? Because it's 200 pages. So you don't want to have that kind of dictionary. <laughs> your editor window is your dot sat file. Right? Yes, you do. You didn't get yeah. That's your scratch pad, your work out, whatever you want to call it, your dot sats. Where you edit. Editor, edit. Okay. Oh, I didn't know how to do the word. All right. I am going to stop the recording and answer any more questions about class is over.